let's say smart things. Go. <laughs> I want to take a break from that. Can't we? Okay. Can't we just? Uh, can't we just have our our meetings with you know debauchery and 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 ridiculousness, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Ridiculousness I get. Debauchery means what exactly? It sounds like a smart word. Oh, yeah. Know. So debauchery means like kind of like debased, like a debased sort of like uh, um, bad taste and, okay. and uh, so is, is, is there a word like, in a like vulgar? Debauchery I mean, is a word and then yeah, dead at the front of it. And it, like, I don't, how does that word work? Like it's Greek or something or whoa, yeah, lightning? What happened there? Oh, you turned on your screen. You're, you're Googling it. Yes, yes, I'm Googling it. So debauchery, let's see if... Uh, debauchery is... Urban Dictionary. Is that what you're using? You should use Urban Dictionary. It tells you the truth. Guaranteed. You look in your source, I'll look in Urban Dictionary. Uh, okay, is. okay. So we'll do Webster first, right? Okay. okay. And uh, extreme indulgence and in bodily pressure, uh, pleasures and extreme sexual pleasures. Okay, so I would try and... You know, I guess that we don't really want to do the sexual part of that, eh? <laughs> um... Yeah, it's like basically the same on, on Urban Dictionary. Sadly, your definition of Urban Dictionary definition are the same because, because yeah, it's about, yeah, or Involving sex, definitely. drugs, alcohol, uh, and often considered immoral. Okay, so, yeah, all right. I mean, a night mm. in wild rioting and debauchery. Yeah, here's a good definition for Urban Dictionary. To lead astray morally to corrupt. Sounds like something you find in the Lord's Prayer. Or to basically explain how crazy <laughs> something is. So right now we're doing debauchery. We're debauching the English language or something. I, I don't know. It sounds terrible. Don't do that. Yeah. Well, actually, so then if you if we reflect on it, it was an incorrect word, right? Because you know we're intending to take the silliness and the stupidity that it, you know uh, that that's out there and mm -hmm. leaning into it in a way so that we kind of like just dumb it down and. And so, you know, there's a, uh, I think a truth seeking apparatus in there, meaning that it's like, there, there's a, there's, there's a byproduct that it should actually make it. I, know, th I, I think guess. we're botcherying it, not debauch. <laughs> we're putting the botchery <laughs> back into it. We're, we're making it whole again. We're PG-13, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 13ing 13 this whole thing. Okay, right? I love it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, well, the weird thing is some words don't work like that. Like I had this course, uh, engineering society and ethics or something that basically we all took in first year and we all thought was stupid because i don't know we, we were dumb engineers well we weren't engineers we we're engineering students to be clear um and then the uh, tas uh, this is what you pay good money for i've discovered uh, the ta had no idea what they're talking about and somebody asked what the word delimit meant and the uh, ta explained it was the opposite of the word limit which would have been a great um answer if it had been right but you know when you then take a computer science course and you find out that delimiter is the thing that like separates things out you like basically limit and delimit are the same word it's just the french decide to screw us up by like calling their word delimite or something and then yeah so debauchery and botry might be the same thing right so, right 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 yeah. botry botry yeah. Huh. yeah yeah the delimiter and the limiter that's really interesting so um as an engineer you're thinking about like the limits uh, you could say like the limits to growth for example okay um, right. Well, so to be clear, and for, for legal purposes, I am not an engineer. I studied engineering. I don't actually have an engineering license. Oh, so I can't call okay, myself an okay. engineer. I can call myself somebody who studied engineering. Okay. All right. But anyway, yes. So, so an engineer. On, it's a yeah. computer science background is what you have, right? Well, no. So, yeah, no, I, I have a, a chemical engineering degree is what I studied. And uh, I worked in IT. Um, mm. So I have like a. I, well, uh, to be fair, I worked at Nortel, so I have a how not to do things background, um, you know, so yeah. So, so yeah, d take anything I, I suggest with, that has any sort of legal or business or any other implication, especially medical or anything with the, I'd say a grain of salt, that's probably bad from a medical advice standpoint. Like just, just basically discount everything I say. It is completely idiotic and stupid. If you follow anything I suggest and it goes wrong and badly, like re really, what were now. you thinking? Was yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Who is we got a podcast fool? that's called "Leaning Into Stupidity." Yeah. How seriously exactly. can we? Exactly. Can, yeah. You know, yes. like wait. To, to be clear, please sue us if you're watching. If you're the one person yeah. watching this, please, please do something stupid and sue us, just so we can show you how dumb you are. Yeah, you're only you, dumber than what we're doing. Yeah, Your Honor. I mean, I have <laughs> I I have testimony from YouTube of of Alex making these claims, and you can see here right in the footnotes <laughs> that it's come. It's coming from a, a, a series called 
leaning into stupidity. Oh fuck! They spelled stupidity wrong on there. Your Honor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, my courtroom drama. There you go. That, that's winning an Emmy. There you go. You know, well, uh, like, whatever the Canadian award is. It, is it? Is it the ultimate trump card? I mean, is it the altruistic <laughs> trump card? Because the thing is, is it you know Trump? He has a trump card. He somehow is like the shit bounces off of him, right? It's like, oh, you know, did I just push that guy out of my way? I mean, it's like you know. Sorry, hey, who are we talking about now? Donald Trump, right? Who's so that? Never heard of him. What are we talking about? <laughs> Just wait. He's coming. He's the, guy, coming. the guy put his name, puts the names on the side of his buildings. The guy who starred in uh, Home Alone 2, the Christmas movie. <laughs> he starred in Home Alone about. 2. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, not starred, but he had a guest appearance in Home Alone 2. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, that's that's he's, what he's famous for, right? It's Home Alone 2. It's Christmas time, right? He was in there. It's a Christmas movie. He puts his names on the sides of buildings to remind you about the movie or something. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I don't know. So yeah. he was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, what are, what, what are, what are your thoughts about when you think of Donald Trump pre-election? What were your, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's oh, kind of but basically we saw this, like I live in Toronto, right? So basically hmm. I love Doug Ford. I think the guy's amazing. He's super smart and everything. <laughs> and, his, and his brother Rob was kind of like, the preview of Donald Trump and that like Rob was a really, really nice guy and stuff like that. And Donald mm-hmm. Trump maybe was a bit of a jerk or whatever, but like that kind of like just going out there and sort of being like the every man and sort of, you know, being like, well, these elites and like whatever that whole thing, like Rob Ford had this whole thing where he kept a uh, track of like what people spent on stuff. And like these other people like would spend stuff on, on th- and then he wouldn't spend any money on anything. He'd be like, yeah, I don't spend any money on stuff, but he'd like actually go out and like, apparently people would call him up and be like, yeah, my, you know, whatever this problem with the city is a pothole and he'd like be all over it and stuff like that. So I'm not saying Donald Trump went out and fixed potholes. Like don't, don't, you know, read anything in there, but like the idea of like actually serving your constituents was something like Rob Ford did well, but like, he was never like, like he never tried to like come across as like this, like overly smart sort of egghead type person. And neither mm-hmm. did Donald Trump. And that's what we're accomplishing here too, is we're going to have maximum power and influence in the world by leaning into stupidity. And I'm not saying that like you shouldn't be smart and stuff like it's just smart people are terrible at like explaining their ideas well, right? Because they they actually make their ideas more complicated. Like if you read anything, um, there's probably a book you have right there. Like just pick any random book you had and you like just mm-hmm. just just open it up and read the first paragraph from it. Let, let's see. Let's oh, see. Oh yes, read. okay, let's do that. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't I have pick, to pick the, the Oxford American Dictionary. That's what I have on my desk here. I can't take those that are holding in my camera, but I will pick the first book. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's in a cabinet. Oh, that's super fancy. Oh, what a classic. Oh, yes. yes. What a classic. All right, so hold up the camera. Let's see what it is. Oh, you can't hear me, of course. Well, there you go. The proof okay, of the so- stupidity is happening. So hold up the camera. Let's see what it is. And But I have to tell you guys, that I really didn't pick one. I, it just really, the first one was there, right? I didn't pick the ones on my desk because they're holding up my camera. Yeah, the suspense <laughs> is killing me here. Okay, and what, I have wait. to turn it this way. Mm-hmm. And it's The Story of Art by E.H. Gombrich. Never even heard of it. Okay, so let's read the first paragraph. What does it say? This is an absolute <laughs> classic, I'm telling you. It's a really good book. I would Google it, but it would ruin the... It would ruin... Thing. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I want to go past all the preface crap and all that kind of stuff, right? Sure, sure, sure. So, introduction. There really is no such thing as art. There are only artists. Once these men who took colored earth and roughed out the forms of a bison on the wall of a cave, today some buy their paints and design posters or hoardings. They did and do many other things. There is no harm in calling all these activities art as long as we keep in mind that such a word may mean different things in different places and times. And as long as we realize that art with a capital A has no existence. So okay. <laughs> what did that actually say? Because I kind of got lost there. <laughs> yeah, actually, if you kind of look at it from uh, um, 
what are you trying? Can you say that in the more sense? But you know what? Here's the thing: that author, Gombrich, has yeah. been praised for his ability to simplify uh, information. Well, I think that paragraph could be turned into a meme. Into a meme, okay? Yeah, like picture of bison on wall, mm-hmm. and then Og the caveman saying something. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I right. love how you think in yeah. these little snippets of of memes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what Og the cave person says, maybe. Maybe Og says, that not art. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't okay. Know. Og with a capital A, because that apparently was important, whether it had a capital or not. So you know why he's saying that, right? No. Okay, so when you, when you see an, a capital letter on something like art, you're kind of evoking a, um, a, a universal. Right. So oh. art as a, a general, you know, every art, this, this is, this is generalizing everything. Right. Wow. Okay. Okay. So that's, uh, that's, that's what, especially when it's like a, you know, the concept or the idea of, of art, right. It says you, you know, you, you universalize it by putting a capital in there. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It must be so, really confusing in German. <laughs> Cause I capitalize a lot of stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, or 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 a, a script that runs from right to left. <laughs> it's like, what do you cap? Whoa. You know, do you capitalize the end of it or the? I don't know. I just. I, I know. Really I know weird. if you're it's doing totally like a ransom interest. note, you put lots of capitals all over the place. Oh, I yes, don't know why. Right. Like, does that make it like people give you more money for ransom? I don't know. But yeah, so capital A art. What is he saying? It doesn't exist. Yeah, he says there's no there's no one universal ideal of art. Which is interesting. Wow. So you could say that, you know, there's wow. no ideal conception of art. I, and- I like it. He's an anti Aristotelian. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Aristotle, I believe, was humanities, do a humanities with this plural, maybe greatest villain. Yeah. Mm. Because like Aristotle, like his ideas were like kind of crap. You said you like Plato. I think Aristotle came after Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Yeah, I don't know much about this, but my, my impression is. Aristotle caused lots of problems because he tried to like abstract everything away. And that's what people do with a lay art or whatever. They'd like abstract everything away and it has no connection to like any of our reality, which is exactly like kind of he's sort of doing the opposite of what I wanted there. He's actually making a really, really smart argument in a way that people can understand, which is basically the Donald Trump, you know, Rob Ford phenomenon of like connecting with real people on sort of real world issues as opposed to the abstract like, you know, things that eggheads do, right? Mm. Like if you talk about like, what was Donald Trump's thing with the carrier plant? There was some plant that carrier, they made air conditioners or whatever carrier does, and they're going to move to Mexico. <laughs> and then he tweeted something about it. And then maybe they did, maybe they didn't move back to Mexico, but it sounded like they stayed in America because he tweeted. Right. I remember it's, doing a meme about yeah. that. I, I was the rear, right. rear, rear. I have this little stupid video of me doing it. It was about the turbine incident or, wow. or something like that. Yeah. Well, okay um, tell me what, wanna, do, do you have this meme like can we see this meme I, for next week or yeah i think we'll uh I'll, I'll kind of slowly multitask i'm not the best at it but yeah. you know i old memes sounds like a really good topic because like we could take a meme from like like yeah whatever two three four years ago whatever and just look at it now and like does this meme make sense now it's just ridiculous and kind of funny but yeah. um yeah we will look at it so so give me a second and <laughs> and i'll 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 kind of work on that as I'm, as I'm talking. So, um, yeah, I love Plato. Um, I think, I think Plato, um, and Aristotle both could be charged of, uh, you know, with that, um, of, of abstraction, but in, in defense of, of, of the, the abstraction that's ha- taking place with both of those thinkers effectively it was kind of the understanding of what reason is. You got to think the birthplace of humanity, at least in the West, that tradition happened um, with the death of Socrates. This is, you know, when the the eggheads basically, um, you know, agreed. Well, Socrates. Yes, yeah. yeah, Socrates was that turning point. And you say, yeah. okay, well, let's ask a stupid question about, well, why is it the death of Socrates that made this, you know, such an important transition point in history? And really it comes down to heroes. So prior to um, Socrates, who was an everyday chap, Right. Mm, you know, yeah. I mean, he's yeah. one of the people that would say, you know, we don't need, you know, colorful language. I'm, you know, the, um, uh, you know, uh, humility is really important to really understand that it's actually, 
you, you know, you don't know that much, really, you know, like really humble yourself. And what the aristocratic um, uh, Plato did, okay, because he was from a very influential family, is he worshipped the guy on the ground, basically. Okay. Mm. Now he did it after the fact. Well, like Socrates already had a very um, interesting um, and maybe a little bit like uh, celebratory or like a celebrity um, uh, aura about yeah, him. Yeah, I don't think celebrities his... are very celebratory. Those, those words shouldn't <laughs> be so similar. Yeah, yeah, no. Right? I, yeah, 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 yeah. So he was, he was, um, you know, known and, and you have an, an aristocratic Plato that says, I, I want to not worship this person, but he's somebody that should be really looked upon as a hero, right? And so instead of focusing on the Odysseus, Achilles, these warrior class heroes, it was the single point in history where the Western tradition said, hey, we're going to you know, worship an intellectual hero, right? And so that's because of our superpower ability to abstract things, right? This is, this is something that I think what the, the tradition of the ancient uh, world in Greece, what it was actually um, very good at and responsible for describing, and this is Plato's philosophy, is the fact that they're describing um, uh, proof from extraction, right? So you can take something and you can ex you can use abstract thought and move it towards a proof, right? Okay, and okay. so um, I think I think I think where the sensitivity comes, um, you know, where we even you know refer to. Uh, say our academic class, which could be just even a modern version of the clergy, the reason why we kind of get, you know, a little agitated with, with that wow. is that they're not always right. And they're and, not terribly uh, celib celibate either. So, you know, <laughs> no, they just can't that. keep, wow. that, that's, that's wow. the other thing too. You, you, I was just listening to the CBC and, and, and somebody was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Roman Catholic priest was my part, my father, because <laughs> it's like the ironies run deep <laughs> well like i'm getting fathers everywhere right holy ghosts and all this kind of stuff hey, so. <laughs> you gotta wonder about that term sometimes yeah um yeah i guess so okay so the idea of taking something and abstracting it um like what would be an example of that that like you know you can sort of do in your day-to-day -day life well, a very simple one that is very, very universal is the, you know, the mathematics of the triangle and uh, what Pythagoras gave us, which uh, effectively described uh, the the entire engineering um, foundation of, of the pyramids, right? I mean, but like, is this something you do day to day? You're like going around like, man, if only I had a triangle here to solve this problem. Well... You know, um, I don't know if I'm digging myself a hole here or anything, but it does sound an awful lot like, um, you know, what what the grade eight trigonometry kid would say. Why would I be? Why would I learn trigonometry? Why what was you the, learn what's this the stuff? Point? Yeah, what's exactly. the point of this? Right? Yeah, what's the point of learning anything in school? Like, just and, go out in the real world and learn from there. Wouldn't that that be better? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we talked about that before, and I think the idea is that. Um, I think an education gives you the some of the really important foundations of of how things actually fit together and replicate properly. So I'll give you an example. I mean, if you mm. if, if you, in your in your engineering profession, um, if you had no idea about the cumulative kind of knowledge in the engineering field, then every time you had your professional engineering it wouldn't even be an end, a professional engineering de designation because yeah i'm not a like, professional engineer like we talked about we've before, already said that yeah 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 well, okay yeah in the field i think you can have you 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 understand the affinity and the natural talent towards mathematics to, to solve problems right and so what we're what we're doing when we're teaching our our children these types of things is we're teaching them how to use say best practices uh non-faulty logic mm -hmm. These sound like dangerous ideas. Yeah, no so. best practice. This is like a way to like lots of problems in the world. If you're like, hey, I have this best practice from over here. 
and you put yeah. it into this context where it's not appropriate it's like oh it turns out this best practice is terrible like um yeah. somebody hmm, can't remember his name an economist lant pritchard writes a lot about best practices and implementing them in places like africa they're just a terrible terrible idea and it's like mm-hmm. yeah no, you should actually go and work with like the local conditions and figure out what's appropriate for that situation rather than taking something. I, so I think like, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'm trying to think. Try not to, to intellectualize everything, right? You, you read, yeah. you need to really. I think we've you, gone too far in that direction. Yeah, I think we've gone too yeah. far to the abstractions and like at the time, yes, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, whatever, maybe there wasn't enough abstraction. People are like going around making people drink hemlock because whatever, that is just a cool <laughs> thing to do. I, I don't know. To be clear, don't do that at home. No, no. And mock's no, no. not good for you. Um, yeah. And then like, you know, whatever that had, that stuff happened. And then like the abstraction was like a weird, crazy thing. But then now it's kind of like, then they decided there's this guy who was preaching things about like being nice to the poor and like all these other things. And then like they decided to like, you know, crucify him. And then it turns out like, you know, that sort of backfired on that. The, the Romans and like this guy went and his, you know, apostles and whatever went and like, you know, came up with this like amazing religion, which then like took over the Roman Empire, but then like basically created the same problems again, right? So it's almost like that whole, you know, Socrates thing with the abstraction. It's like, you know, abstraction then became this thing that like became, you know, onerous and it became like, well, now we have too much abstraction and we don't have enough real world. And as a result, like the Donald Trumps come along and they're like, yeah, screw all those eggheads and their stupid abstractions. Carry your air conditioner. I'm going to get them to keep like three jobs in America. And he's going to tweet that. And then people connect with that because they can relate to like, yeah, I like jobs. I like having a jobs. I like air conditioners. Man, Trump's keeping three whole jobs in America, a country of 300 million people. That's impact. That's what I want my president spending his time on, keeping jobs in America. But like, and that's the thing, like, we, like when charities, because I'm involved in a lot of this effective altruism stuff. And when mm-hmm. charities like money, they show you a picture of one kid. Mm-hmm. Like the charities who are really good at getting your money show you a picture of like one kid and they yeah. say, look at this kid. And they're yeah. sad. And like, yeah. whatever. if you give them, you know, if you give us five bucks or whatever, mm-hmm. they won't be as sad. And that works. And that connects. And the drives effective altruists absolutely bonkers because they're like, no, you shouldn't do that. You should like, you know, help all these kids. And like, you should something about drowning children. If you should have as much spend your money to help kids in other countries just like you would like go and help a drowning child in your own backyard or something um don't put a pool in your backyard good way to prevent having a drowning child in your backyard um but yeah it's like this sort of like abstract weird sort of logic where it's like and then it's like it doesn't connect because like you don't actually i don't know like if you were to go out and save a drowning child you'd be like one of the most meaningful things you would ever do in your life but like donating like whatever five thousand dollars to save it, you know somebody in another country it doesn't seem all that meaningful. It doesn't like it's just giving money. I love it. I love it, Alex. You're just um, you know you're 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 pointing to something that's really really important. I think. <laughs> what is <laughs> really it? Important. I don't know what it is though. Well, you know, good philosophy is like a birthing process. It's like it's a midwifery of sorts. So it's like, okay, we got the idea. How do we how do we bring this out? How do we bring how do we tease it out? Now, I might get esoteric. I don't know. You have to tell me if you it's yeah, uh, get it you know, esoteric. right on the heels. I don't even know what that means. Do it. Well, kind of hard to understand. <laughs> so and right on the heels of fuck, we don't need more abstractions. I'm going to abstract the fuck out of this right yes. here, right now. Okay, yes, please do it. Okay. So, like, I really think you're you're describing um, a, fun, uh, a fundamental ideological divide in, in 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 our culture, and so you have conservatives and liberals. This is one way to really look at this, right? So, yeah, and the conservatives are the good guys, clearly, and liberals are the bad guys, right? Oh wait, who are your listeners? Maybe the liberals are the good guys. Whoever's paying you the most money are the good guys. Okay, keep going. Yeah. I, I, you know, okay, that's. I mean. Okay, let's run with that. Okay, so the conservatives are the good guys, and and the liberals are like um, like the devil. Okay, let's really get it. Okay, so and so the problem is is that you well say, they do in in Canada. To be fair, the liberals color is red, right? So it's not like they just <laughs> pick the color randomly. They're just yeah, like, hey, I'm we're going to be sure. red. Yeah. Yes, you know, yeah, like you chose yeah, it yeah, yourself, yeah. right? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. confusing when I look at American politics and like the. Problems are red and the Democrats are blue. I'm like, that's confusing. Why don't you pick the colors we picked? Why would you pick your own colors, America? But anyway, <laughs> never mind. Okay. All I'm trying to say is you have this, 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 um, 
the the conservative position is kind of like stop fucking around with shit and just leave it alone you know like go and do a hard work day's work take responsibility for what you need to take just stop trying to fix everything right okay it doesn't mean there's not injustices out there, but stop trying to fucking fix everything. I don't know. Conservative people seem way more innovative than liberal people when it comes to like actually creating businesses and stuff like that. Like if you were going to ask somebody about capitalism and like creating a business and stuff like your liberal person would like point out all the reasons not to do it. And like, would oh, probably like introduce you to a communist yes, yes, and yes, stuff yes, like yes, that. Yes, yes. Whereas you're, you're like conservatives don't really know any communists. And they're like, yeah, of course, start a new business. Like that is the thing you should do. That's what makes the world better as a new business. Yeah, you know, okay, you know, it's so funny because we're, you know, I uh you we're really steering the conversation in cool cool ways, right? Cuz I could have elaborated more on that, but I'd like this yeah. piece now. I like okay. this direction of it. So Okay. Um the So the, I prevented your abstraction by going for a specific example. I well, love it. I guess no, and when you were trying to analyze the 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 the, you actually started to analyze in a way where you said, this is the way things should be. And by doing that, you're actually doing that liberal, uh, you know, devil move to say, this is the way things, eat, uh, you know, should be Whoa. as opposed to the way things are. So you actually, with your reason, you actually moved into the territory and did what they do, which is, is, is a bad thing. And so, um, yeah, I yeah, don't know how to a, respond to this. I think it you was just like a, me a liberal devil, and then I'm sort of like complimented, but also maybe insulted. But um, oh yeah, so D and D alignments. What what's yours? Just so we can get the context for this. I have no idea what you're talking about. D and D, Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons wow. and Dragons, there's alignments. There's like um, lawful, neutral, chaotic is one dimension. The other one is good, neutral, evil. You yeah, seem I, like you could potentially be lawful evil. I don't know. I'm not judging. I'm just saying that's what you could be. I'm going to be a little bit. Um, fuck it. I'll be condescending here. Okay. But it's yeah. in a playful way. So the only yeah. dice that I like to throw are these. They're called the straguli. And it's a six sided bone die from ancient Greece. And so this, when you yes. threw it, uh, it was. Um, you know, one of our first games of chance, but it actually landed um, on in an 80-20 rule, right? Because it's like, think of weighted dice with only four sides. You have a 40% chance of it lining on one side, 40 on another, 10 on another, 10 on another. That's the fucking Pareto ratio. And you went okay. with the triangle example of a day-to-day -day useful thing with math as opposed to the dice thing? Well, nobody knows what the fucking astragali is. And this is the but problem. But they know like, dice. And this is yeah, an important exactly. thing in your life. Like you're rolled in <laughs> dice every time you walk out your door. Right? I don't know if you heard about this COVID thing, man. But it's yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't go outside. So I've heard it was bad. But it's like but, rolling dice going outside. But the answer is, is that I, have, I actually have zero intellectual or knowledge about Dungeons and Dragons beyond the word Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know anything else other than... You have no idea they use dice like extensively. Well, no, I know they use okay. dice, but okay. what I'm saying is like the only dice that I use or think about actually have been these kind of dice because I don't know, they're intellectually stimulating and I think they're really cool. They and also look like physic, like kind of like from a stim perspective, like a, you know, sort of like stimulating for like, you know, sort of in the autistic community, this concept of stim oh. and having something to play with, like, you know, those fidget spinners kind of fidget thing. Spinners. Like it looks yeah, like yeah, that's, yeah. that's the original D and D die and the original fidget spinner all in one. And the Greeks invented it. <laughs> See, that's what you need to tell me, not Aristotle, Plato, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah, the Greeks are the best. They invited, invented D and D and fidget spinners. Well, some of where my contribution is, is actually in that particular area, because there's very few academics that even understand or know what an astraguli is. And it's such a direct implication of mathematics into. I think that should be how you get tenure. You got to roll the astraguli. And if you get double, <laughs> you know, yeah, unweightedness, right. whatever you call the <laughs> yeah. numbers, then you get tenure. And if you don't, we'll try again next year. Oh, fuck. Could you imagine? Let's lean into this stupidity yes, for a minute, yes. because um, like. If we just made it, um, uh, like, let's like, get rid of this idea of merit. Let's just say, like, just do the best you can <laughs> and then just roll the dice and see what happens. Right. And if you like, truly believe and you're like a religious person, God will provide. Right. And it's like, yeah, uh, you roll the dice. And if like God thinks I'm to like get tenure or whatever, then the dice will come up and you'll get tenure. And like, if you don't, then you're just like some sort of heathen or something. Whatever. Oh, well, but the I humans guess. can believe in statistics. So like, yeah, you, you, you start rolling the dice when you're like, I don't know, 
30 and maybe you have like five or 10 years to roll the dice. And based on whatever probabilities you have like a 52% chance of becoming tenured. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That sounds better than most people's chances. I need to go back to first principles. Okay. Before us. So this is a Jordan Peterson thing and we're going to be the best of friends, you and I, I think. Right. But I need to know what, I need to know what you think about, like, what do you think about when you think of God? Like, what is it? Because I don't know what you're oh, know. talking Big, about here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I don't like, know we'll, if you're talking we'll pro- about. Well, it's Christmas, right? <laughs> so like, like, you know, so like, the, um, <laughs> so, so I think there's, there's a whole like story here, right? In terms of like, you know, like Jesus and, uh, you know, the birth of Christ and like the crucifixion and stuff. And I think that's part of this whole thing with God, but I, I understand other people, their beliefs in God are like somebody else or some other thing happening with God. Like the Muslims believe something else. And like, I, I don't actually really know what people believe other than like, I know people don't believe Jesus is God, but like, I think like, you know, there's something to that. Um, I'm not a hundred percent, like totally converted to Christianity, but I'm sort of on that path. Like it was, I was raised an atheist. So I've been walking along this path. Um, I've actually committed to many people out loud that I won't get baptized until everybody in the world has clean water. Um, so they, oh, basically, I'm, cool. I'm willing, that's I'm, really cool yeah, I'm, to, say, I'm willing right? to risk eternal yeah, damnation yeah, yeah, yeah. because like, if it doesn't happen in my lifetime, apparently somebody who is Catholic told me I could end up in, in hell for all eternity if I don't get baptized. Um, but you know, I don't know. That sounds, that sounds like, okay, that's a good, that's a risk I'm willing to take, right? Like if you, if you truly believe like, you know, God will provide and things like that. And you know, like, then it's like, okay, well let's lean into this and be like, yeah, I am going to do what I can with my life to bring, bring clean water to everybody in the world. And like, you know, if that happens, then I'll get baptized. And maybe I can talk some other atheists into like also getting baptized. Cause like atheists, like especially the liberal ones probably want people to get clean water. So it's like, okay. And yeah. the conservatives probably want like, you know liberals to not do stupid things. So like providing yeah. people clean water seems like a not stupid thing to do. So like, that sounds yeah. good. And, and like, I live in Toronto, right? And this is, you know, the six we call it in Toronto, mm-hmm. thanks to Drake. And which SDG is clean water? Number six. It all makes sense. See, there you go. It's all God's plan that we're going to get clean water. It's going to be some Toronto component to it. Maybe Drake will just like watch this and he'll be like, yeah, clean water for everybody. I can just do that right out of my pool here and along the viral path or whatever. I don't know how much water is in Drake's pool, but we, we have a lot here. Yeah. If somebody wants to come to Toronto, they can get lots of clean water. We have like all these great lakes, but the problem is like getting it to the people where they are. Right. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, I've talked to lots of people about this, this amazing technology out there. I have a couple of um, teams I'm working with in um, East Africa on UVC LED clean water. Cause I think that's a great technology. Cause the big problem is like, basically if you're an engineer or sorry, if you studied engineering, um, you believe that like the base, basic problem with a lot of things is engineering, which like probably isn't true, but certainly the, the idea of driving the cost down is a hundred percent true. Mm-hmm. So like if the cost of providing clean water is, you know, one cent a day for everybody in the world, then that's something that everybody in the world can have. Cause like people are living on like, you know, less than a dollar a day. And if you're living on, you know, somewhere around 80 cents a day, you know, spending one cent of your 80 on clean water, that's probably okay. That's probably reasonable. Right. Yeah. Let me give a, give me a prop up props out to um, the more um, like the Cavendish banana or the, uh, uh, the rice that was invented like a parboiled rice, you know, these or, or like a nutrient enriched rice. These are real substantive ways that really okay. changed. Okay, changed. Um, Did how... the Cavendish one come from Prince Edward Island? Because I went no. to Prince Edward Island. There's a place called Cavendish there, and it was nice. I think it was in South America, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it actually. That would be a great, you know, Google thing for us to do. But there's been things. Um... I'm not going on Urban Dictionary and looking for Cavendish banana because I'm pretty sure I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> You know, that would be, um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I wonder if they would, if, if, if the Google Oracle is that perverse, right. And we get a lot of, um, you know, bananas in pockets. So <laughs> there you go. You did say something about midwifing things earlier. So I, I don't uh, know. I don't know the process here, but anyway, so, um, where were we in terms of the liberals versus conservatives thing? Conservatives good, liberals bad. Is that what we concluded? Or would well, it be better to say the opposite so that you get more viewers? Or should we just like flip flop between the two? No, wait, think, that would make us liberals. Okay. <laughs> you're just, yeah, you're great. This is awesome. Yeah. No, I just, I feel like just switching because, you know, you're so funny. <laughs> wait, wait, what are you? Like, what's your, what's your take on all this stuff? I, I'm, I'm more liberal actually. Really? Um, yeah. But for a guy who has like successful startups and stuff like you really shouldn't be, you should really be on the side of like taxes are too high. Well, it would be better I, for you. 
if I wanted a be- if I wanted a more uh, cost effective startup, I wouldn't have chosen to try and market to academics. <laughs> it's like herding cats, man. You know, I yeah. you know to, to get them to common purpose. What do you mean? There's going to be money involved. Yeah, you should go for people doing AI. <laughs> right? So seriously, I met with this guy. He does this thing. Um, it sounded amazing, and he realized that like they were trying to do stuff for academics, and that was sort of. Like, yeah, herding cats. And so they went for AI researchers because they're like basically academics who are smart enough to like know how to make money. Oh, so yes. they do AI yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, and then the company yeah. is like, oh, AI, we'll pay you lots of money for that. And then they get paid tons of money. And then you can like, so just take whatever you're doing and sell yeah. it to people who do AI stuff. Actually, I'll introduce you to this guy. You'll make a ton of money and you can thank me later and you can help fund some clean water stuff. Oh, oh I was going to ask about the fact there's so much, honestly, yeah. man, you know, yeah. there's so much to talk about. Did you hear there? I saw this one Israeli invention it looks like um a box the size of a um a heat pump okay you know in a house you know so i don't know what is that like like a air conditioner yeah yeah exactly because yeah, most yeah. people are like heat i have a heat pump and they're like you're a nerd what do you actually have it's an air conditioner <laughs> i love it, I love it. <laughs> you know? okay so you got this air conditioner right yeah so this the the, the machine actually extracts water from the air and so where i live where it's um so cool yeah exactly. i saw a documentary so, on this yeah it's playing so, in theaters it's called dune you should watch it <laughs> yes okay <laughs> a mockumentary right okay well no it's and like basically that so you've probably read the book it's amazing and then the movie was incredible but yeah so what is this heat exchanger so it, sorry this heat pump air conditioner thing. It it, it's just, water. it's about the size of a heat pump, right? So okay. it, it actually, it, it takes the, the, the uh, moisture in the air and then converts it to drink clean drinking water and stuff. So um, oh. it would work great in, in my climate, right? Cause I've got, um, you know, high humidity. There's places where there's like, you know, it was very humid. That would probably work well. If it's really dry, you're going to run into a problem. So you know, I mean, so there's a there's an example of a, a non-universal fix, right? Going back to the capital letter, you can't have right. a one fit in complex systems. They don't really work that yeah. way, yeah. right? No, they don't. Well, that's the problem with abstraction, right? Your abstraction is only so good as you understand its limitations. All right? the variables yeah. and everything yeah. like that, yeah. right? And and I think the, the value of a God argument, the best, the mm-hmm. most coherent one that I can actually see as a non-believer, right? Oh, well, wow. okay, we well, have to change that, but anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so the the only way I can actually, um, you know, come to kind of come to terms with that thing, this yeah. idea, or is come that... to Jesus, you can call it. But yeah, the only way you can come to <laughs> Jesus is what? What what, what? 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 How do we buy your soul? Like, how do we do the? Uh, you know, how would um, it take? What would it take for yeah. me to come to Jesus? Yeah, like how do we do the thing in Les Miserables where like the prince, the priest buys Jean Valjean's soul with the silver candlesticks, right? Like, that's like my model of the way the world ought to work. Is like Christian people should go around buying people's soul because right oh, now, like fuck, the yeah. culture buys it for the devil, right? With like all the terrible stuff out there, right? All right, let me lean into stupidity here, and I think I could be bought fairly for a fairly low price. Okay, but. I'd have to, <laughs> yeah, right? No. I'd have to have, I'd have to have the, the disclaimer in there that I could explain it my way. It's kind of like when they said to Jordan Peterson, well, do you believe in God? And he's like, well, it depends what you mean, God, right? And so this is, hey, this is a very smart move because it's intellectually honest. Mm-hmm. Is he digging into something that needs digging into? Uh, digging into? I think he does, man. Honestly, I do. Yeah, and I yeah. think what he's describing is he's describing the value of what religion offers. Um, and I think an atheist position um, belittling people because, you know, they're they're sheep or they're stupid or something like that. Well, the sheep is a great example. Like, I love the sheep mm-hmm. example because mm-hmm. it's like the story from the Bible, the 99 and the one. Right. So the shepherd goes out and he's got a flock of 100 and there's 99. that are fine. And there's one that's kind of going off, getting into trouble. And like, yeah. you know, if you talk to anybody, you're like, if you talk to most people with ineffective altruism and stuff like that, they'll be like, yeah, just focus on the 99. Screw that other one. But like the right way to develop a community is to care for everybody. And like liberals know this, like that's their thing. Like so you're like, coming over to the liberal side. What are you no, doing? That's I right. come that, over to the party. It's over in the conservative house. Then you go back to the liberal house. I'm like, this is it. But this is, this is why that's liberals like should, the girls... should embrace 
the the, the gospels because it's basically the, their you, their stuff just, that they're trying to do and you want to include everybody that's that's the point of the sheep and stuff like that so you yeah just include did everybody. the stupid girl thing move the girlfriend move the one that says yeah. you know she's at home she's like you know she come over nobody's home and then you go there and then she's not there and no one's home <laughs> Wait, I missed that. What happened? <laughs> well, Where'd because, she go? Well, because we were sitting here talking about something juicy, you know, yeah. something really good. And then you went over to the liberal house again. Well, just to steal their sheep. And I'm, anyway, yeah. Oh, you're bringing their sheep over. I see. Well, because yeah. they don't care for people, right? So the liberals, they don't bother to take care of everybody. They say they do, but they're so yeah, elitist, they don't. They don't. Yeah, 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 and then you yeah. can just say like, hey, you know, you're working class people. You're awesome. You're amazing. You have families. You love your children, just like everybody does, right? Come on over here. Let's talk about like why, you know, having lower taxes is a good idea. It'll be good for you. And you're like, oh, I'm not sure. I'm working. Like, sounds like lower taxes are good for rich people, not good for me. It's like, yeah, but you want to be a rich person someday, right? It's like, well, of course. It's like, okay. So let's get keep the taxes low now so that when you become rich, they'll be low for you. You know, when you reach the promised land. Yeah, yeah. No, I see. I see. Uh, you know, I I mean, I I know that's 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 how the American dream was paved, right? There, well, and, there, uh, there was also, you know, a bit of like stolen land and stolen labor in the American. A little bit anyway, of that, you know. A little, little bit of that. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> I think, you know, maybe there's some problems there. And like in Canada, we've started to, you know, do a small, tiny amount of reconciliation with that. Like the, the main reason I think conservatism is the way to go is because basically most of the things that you can change in the world, you can change as a conservative, right? Like yeah. if you're like, hey, I care about climate. Like, yeah, of course you care about climate. Like you live in, <laughs> you live on the earth. Why wouldn't you care about climate? Like, it would be dumb not to. It would be dumb like, it would be like walking outside and be like, I didn't bother to check the weather today and I'm wearing shorts and it's the middle of December, right? Like, you know, that's dumb, right? I, I haven't done that yet, but maybe one day. But it's like the same sort of thing. It's like what we should like do that. And so like the reason to become a conservative is like, that's, the place where you could actually change things because the liberals and stuff like yeah they're they're already doing whatever with climate they like really really poorly and they'll try to do all these solutions that aren't market-based so they're not actually going to work but the conservatives will be like you know maybe a little reluctant to do climate stuff but then like if you're like hey well i have this market-based solution they're like well market-based solution that doesn't sound too bad like i like market-based solutions it's like yeah of course you do because they're generally work quite well for a lot of things yeah. right you know yeah. they're, they're marketplace solutions i think are essential we talked last week about yeah. like full disclosure not everything you know should be left up to the market you know you probably don't want police services left up to the market that might get bad you know things like that the military probably shouldn't be left you know there's there's areas where you, you probably don't but uh yeah sorry i think we were starting to talk about something about conservatives and liberals or something and then we totally sidetracked like five different times and then we backtracked and stuff like that so are you keeping track where we are because i'm not well, you know what the thing is, is it's a it's, it's probably a theme that will just keep going through, okay. Um, okay. you know, um, you know, the fact that there's um, uh, like kind of a foundation that's conservative with yourself. And I'm in like new territory of, of, of a liberal position for myself. I told somebody the other day, I said, because it's a harder one to think out, like it's a harder problem to figure out, um, uh, uh, to, you know, to liberate. Um, and it, the conservative position is fairly easy. It's actually very well defined. Really? I think so. Yeah, I do. Oh, I think the tradi okay. I think tradition of, of a liberal tradition is actually easier to fall into. So let's look at somebody like Shapiro. OK, um, okay. he's very, he's conservative and Orthodox Jew. Um, you know, he's got the blueprint for his life all in front of him. It's 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 like. Here's how an Orthodox Jew behaves. This is the reason why we do it on a larger scale. And I've got 3,000 years, 5,000 years of history and culture to back it up. Okay. Get out of my face, right? Okay. So he, he has something that's, that it's, it's kind of like, um, it's like a background program. And then, you know, refer to like artificial intelligence. And I really had to think a lot about this because I wrote a, a, a book called Will Freeman. It's a, a book about artificial intelligence. So when I when I wrote that, you have to really kind of think, what does it mean to be human, right? What what are we actually doing when we're when we're thinking about political systems, right? Um, about the rule of the few for the many, or meritocracies, or complete democracies, or all of these kinds of thinking that we do, right? All of this this kind of behavior and this history 
that we've been a part of, right? This is all of the things that contribute, um, in, 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 in my opinion, to what the concept of God oh, is. I think you've just proved your point. Yeah, liberals mm-hmm. spend time thinking about this stuff instead of actually doing useful things in the world. Like liberals just tie themselves to the knot, up in knots about reading books and thinking and doing stuff that. And conservatives like just basically go out and do stuff. They're like, yeah, that's cool that you have a theory about whatever, but I actually have like a truck that I need to get working. So let me go oh, get yeah, my truck yeah. working. And then like you, you can be in the, you know, thinking all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So but don't, I don't know. But do you don't, see that? Don't, yeah. But don't go, don't ask for you to be in the driver's seat. Okay. It's fine. You can think about all this sort of stuff. It's fine that you can make some suggestions. But bring the suggestion in a way that we know how to do. What about um, like a somebody who has a theory versus an engineer, that relationship? So you're having that conversation with the, the theorist and the engineer is going, how the fuck do you want me to do this? Like you're trying to, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. So, so the, if the liberals have like the theoretical big picture concepts, right? Okay. The engineers okay. are the ones that are hired to put the shit together, right? So you have a theoretical physicist, and then you have like an applied engineers that know how to yeah. build the fucking rocket, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So I think you can understand. I think it's the other way around. I think the engineers hire the scientists because they need some of those egghead stuff. Because the scientists aren't like you know organized. Well, not necessarily organized, but like they don't. They think in their own little area. They don't think broadly enough. And engineers tend to think a little broad, but like, it's probably not even engineers, it's like actual business people who like are way smarter than engineers who actually know like about finance and like, you know, the important Ooh, things. Oh, a right? guy that's like complimenting. Oh, you're making me blush. So like the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the business people are the smart ones, right? And I mean, yeah. you know, I mean. Well, you know, you get like, if you're a business person, you, you understand stuff about money, right? Yeah. Yeah, and people, right? And like, what, what do you need to make anything happen? Basically, money and people. You need to have some money, and then you need to like, I don't know, get some ideas from somewhere. But the ideas are easy; they're all over the place. And that's like, okay, let's just package this thing up. Like, oh, I need to hire some people to write some software. Okay, cool. How how do I get people to write software? I don't know. Maybe I pay the money. You know? It's a good thing I have well, some. Right? I, I tell you, okay, I'll give you an example. I don't want to name names, yeah. but we one of the initiatives that we are going to do with the universities is to approach some of the student union groups. Okay. Okay. And as I'm going out and growing an entre- entrepreneurial based media outlet and bringing academics into the mix, I'm realizing that they're really kind of useless in terms of networking and bringing people into the mix. Right. Yeah. And I thought yeah, totally. I'd, I'd had this imagine a cluster of like a group of 10 people. And, and I say, OK, everybody, here's the plan. Boom, let's go. And so many of the academics just completely fail in that. And so what I realized, sorry, I'm like, sorry, I missed that part. So you have a group of 10 people and then what are they supposed to do? Well, they were supposed to go out and connect this person with that person have, um, you know, and these are uh, academics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah like they don't do, do that. No, no, that's, that's, that's not, they'll, connect, they'll not even connect yeah. ideas. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that, but I just like the applied. No, part no, sorry, of- I don't mean that they won't connect ideas in their own field. I mean, they'll, they'll connect ideas in their own field. They won't look outside their field. Be like, yeah. I put my blinders on and like, this is the thing, like, this is the thing I'm doing. Right. You know, I want to give you some, um, some sincere advice as a friend, like okay. about this. So the thing is, is that when I hear anybody do a, a generalization, okay. Oh, this is right. Good. This so, is abstraction. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So if you get, if you do a generalization <laughs> about a group, yeah. Keep in mind that, that, you know, I mean, it doesn't signify the whole group, right? Oh no, and, not you. You, you are different and unique. I'm talking about like all the other academics. <laughs> yeah, out there. You're yeah, the weirdos, the, man. Yeah, you're, that's, the, you're the normal academic. Yeah, it's called the snowflake fallacy, yeah. right? Okay, so, that's so, right. so we're so, Canadian, so like it's not really a fallacy. Yeah, well, well, like. so we're nice about it. Yeah, but exactly. the, the thing, the thing is, is that um, it's been a, very exciting for me to to learn a lot of the academic piece. I'm yeah. um, building a company, encouraging the average folk to spend time with um the 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 classics right um read your plato read your aristotle read euclid this yeah. type of thing this is yeah. you know the the essential um you know value of what planks it's very central to what planks is doing right um and cool. it go it goes into a bigger picture though because um it is um 
I guess, reactionary towards the idea that we're going to have some tough economic times ahead. Okay. And then I get into a whole realm of the climate issues, right? Now, that might be the point where you just shut down and say, well, fuck, let's just stop thinking about that. We still have shit to do and, you know, uh, factories to build and business to make and just focus yeah, with yeah. The, the war at hand, right? And sure, if you'd stop sure. fucking thinking about that, you'd realize that it's kind of like uh, a Malth- a, a, a Malthus, right? I think that's who, who came up with these predictions of like, yeah. Um, global collapse because you know population would you know yeah he was basically right yeah. until the industrial revolution which happened around the same time then yeah. which made him wrong so oops yeah and then it's just oops and it's like see we should have just done what we were supposed to and got up and gone to work and done our jobs if you would have done that and stopped worrying about this shit you know and then well we know, do that- need people to worry like you know neurotics ne- neurotic neuroticism is bad for the individual but perhaps useful for the group Perhaps. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. So I don't know. I, I, you know, um, I find it frustrating that, um, you know, these two groups can't come together. And sorry, the two groups are say a liberal and a, a conservative, right, or a Republican and a Democrat. I just, yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, you know. Well, reason it's almost can't like, prevail, right? Like it's um oh yeah. So I think a concept maybe that'd be useful is like this concept of double crux that the rationalists have. This is this idea of like basically you just sort of dive down into like what is the underlying assumption people have, right? And it's like what's the underlying assumption that you believe that conservatives have? Like that's fundamentally different from liberals. Oh, you're asking me now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Yeah, so it's more of a heuristic kind of description. And also, so mm-hmm. it's just something helps me kind of, does that fit the description of, of somebody who's typically conservative? And, and I think there's a contemporary version of it, right? And that that is um, somebody that advocates, or a group that um, advocate towards more the traditional way of doing things and hands-on practical approach to things, right? Yeah, so I, mean, I, I like post-contemporary stuff. And hands-on stuff. So I don't, I'm not necessarily big on the traditions. I'm not conservative and the sort of let's do lots of traditions. So I appreciate like tradition can be useful, but I do like, you know, the post-contemporary sort of stuff. Like let's look at the future. Cause I think that's the sort of thing where like, if you're always looking at the past as your guide, like it's a bit mistaken. You know, it's like driving and looking at the rearview mirror all the time, right? You have to look forward. You have to look at what's happening. And, and like, mm-hmm. that's why like, you know, Fortunately, in Canada, we have this amazing party in Ontario called the Progressive Conservative Party. And you think that sounds like an oxymoron, but like it, it isn't like you can actually yeah. both look forward and be conservative and have yeah. sort of the best of both worlds. Like you're, you're doing amazing things out there to change the world and like useful, meaningful ways for everybody. But you don't have to like, you know, necessarily have such onerous regulations and things that where they're not appropriate. Like, obviously, you need regulations for things where it's health and safety related and stuff like that. And where it's like, you know, there's like financial things where like people get taken advantage of, you know, we got calls all the time from like, you know, the Canadian border services are claiming that, you know, they have an arrest warrant for us, you know, and the number that shows up on the phone is like 416-555, you know, whatever. And, and it's like, well, when I saw that, I'm like, well, that's like the sort of number you see when, in the movie when it's a fake number, right? It's like, like, I don't know who they're trying to target with these. Like, oh, the Canadian border services, they're, they're, yeah, there's an arrest warrant for you. Right? It's like, it's kind of like this is not true because like you would just send a police officer to my house if there was. Like, why would you call oh, me? Oh, is there, is there a conspiracy behind this? Is there, well, could we this, imagine a conspiracy? Well, let's imagine a cons- best conspiracy about this. Okay, well, th- well, it's basically yeah. just a scam, but it's, it's smart in that you make the scam so obvious that it's a scam that anybody who bothers to like actually take action on it, you've like weeded out anybody who has any sense. So there isn't really a conspiracy there. It's just like well crafted. Like it's like something where you've done your marketing really, really well, where you try to make something so unbelievable that the only person who's going to fall for it is somebody who's absolutely going to go through and deliver on the scam. Mm-hmm. Right. So that like the, the mechanics of scamming actually need to shift towards, um, weeding out people who aren't going to go all the way through and complete the scam, right? Like if there's 10 steps to your scam, you want to weed out as many people early on because you don't, 
the further they get along into your scam, the more you're investing in them, right? That's my understanding of the way scamming yeah. works. I haven't actually tried scamming people. I think it's probably a bad idea. If I was going to scam do... someone, here's how I would. I mean, you know, you think about the structure, you're thinking about the logic of it. I, I would do the same yeah. thing if I thought if I thought about that. And yeah, and um, basically, like a useful model is to look at the Soviet Union and like go like it's terrible because it was obviously propaganda. Our propaganda is amazing because most of the time we don't believe it's propaganda, mm. right? And that's how you know you have good propaganda. You're like, yeah, of course. Oh, uh, see, now you're doing the Marx thing. You're doing the whole Zizek, you know, that they live where the guy puts the glasses on. That's what you're doing there. You're like, I don't, I don't oh. even know what that is. I'm, I'm just talking about like what I experience in my day to day reality, which is like, yeah. you know, like really good propaganda is like, you know, what I, what I run into all the time. So yeah, and like sometimes the propaganda serves a useful purpose, and then you can believe in it. You can be like, yes, I believe, you know, whatever. Like I love you know, so the culture in America of just being like super pro-American. I think that's so fantastic and amazing. Right. I realize there's a bit yeah, of a downside yeah, yeah. to it. Like in yeah. Germany, it was sort of went poorly. Um, so yeah. don't do that. But like, you could be like a proud American. And like, I yeah, love, yeah, yeah. you know, like a, one of the great songs is, you know, the Battle Hymn of the Republic is like a fantastic song. And then there's like a Christmas version of it, of like, which is like his peace will make us one or whatever, which is fantastic. Yeah. And it turns like that, you know, um, militaristic element it just turns it you know the the um what's it the swords into plowshares kind of concept mm -hmm. i don't know so there's somebody who's read the bible probably understands this better than i do but this is this concept of like going from like fighting to like actually working together um but yeah no i i think there's lots of amazing stuff here and like I don't, I don't know i don't i don't necessarily agree that it's like that this liberal consider a dichotomy. I think you can pull, you know, useful things from both worlds. Like you probably yeah. do when it comes to voting, you need to decide which side you're on. If it comes to registering in a, in a party, you need to decide. I recently renewed my registration, the progressive conservative party of Ontario, but may, mostly because I think it's probably the best way to actually get, you know, things like climate stuff done. Like we could yeah. be a hundred percent carbon free on our grid, like very, very yeah. soon. Like we yeah. use a small amount of like gas and most of it's hydro. And nuclear. And if we had like France's sort of nuclear ramping rules, which probably work better with, you know, our um, heavy water candy reactors, probably. I haven't done an in-depth technical analysis, of course. I'm not actually an engineer. Um, but like, I did, I did look into this when, when I was in middle school. Like, this is weird. Like, I was really fascinated by nuclear power when I was in middle school. It was awesome. Um, but it's like, you, you know, if you did a little bit, like if we did some things to innovate with, with some of the nuclear technology we have, we wouldn't be that far off. And we already have a lot of hydro, so we're probably not that far from being 100% carbon free on our grid. And like, what conservative premier wouldn't want to like say, yeah, we are not necessarily the first because Quebec's probably already done it. But like, you know, whatever, one of the first. We some There'd be some marketing way of saying like, we're leading, you know, whatever. We're doing amazing things here in Ontario, which of course we are, because clearly Ontario is the best. Um, what do you think brought the what was that force what? that brought the 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 conservatives over to caving a shit about the environment? What do you think that was? Oh, probably electoral politics. This is the great thing about elections is like you need to win. And so if like and this is what's you know totally screwed up with America is like because they've like gerrymandered the crap out of things and the Senate is sort of like yeah, you know, sort of broken since the inception it's like basically you you actually do need proper incentives to like um yeah so it's almost like an people, american pander to votes right like pandering to votes is actually what you want politicians to do you you would probably want to see two conservative candidates like candidates and have a party like liberals as the small representative of like 10 percent of the population right you know because you know, they, well, I, I think having a full on communist might be a good idea for a few years, because then you could see just how terrible that is. Right. Like if we had like a full on communist come in and implement whatever, you know, like Bob Ray did basically here, then like <laughs> basically that just makes like changes everything permanently. Right. Because it's like, yeah. yeah, we tried this like Bob Ray NDP communism stuff and it was terrible and everybody remembers it. And like we're never doing that again. So like, yeah, if you did that for the whole of Canada, like, yeah, sure. Let the communists get in for a few years as long as we can have another election. Then they're never going to get in for another generation or two. That's fine. Systems are complex. Yeah, it's almost like the government can't make that much change in four years, right? I mean, you know, you have a, a new Democrat party that comes into power, and you know, they talk about what they want to do, but the the political oh, yeah, process you're in BC. is so yeah, yeah it's yeah, so fascinating yeah. there because you don't even have a conservative party. You have the BC Liberals, which is basically an amalgam of conservatives and liberals who like 
figure they had to like join together because the NDP were too powerful or something. Yeah, we're the greenest on the on the, on the whole on the whole planet. You right? also have the least genocide when it comes to the indigenous population. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you laugh. But like, 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 <laughs> no, but I went to this thing and somebody was doing a land declaration in Newfoundland, <laughs> and they talked about to be proud of. We have well, no, the least amount, <laughs> well, yeah. you should be. No, the, the, they were doing a land declaration in in Newfoundland, and they were so like a bit off key because they talked about the traditional lands of the Biothuk. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah like. I think we're missing the point here. Like you really should lean into these were the traditional lands of the Beothuk. There are no Beothuk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete yeah, genocide yeah, yeah. happened on the island of Newfoundland under the British. Yeah. Right? Like that is like a historic fact. And like yeah. that is something where like when you look at Canada, you have complete genocide in the East Coast. And in the West Coast, I imagine you hopefully have some of the best relations and like maybe things seem to get along really, really well out there. But I'm in Ontario, so it's just like, I'm just imagining things. I don't know what the real reality is because I'm just talking out of abstractions as opposed to actually going there and seeing what's happening on the ground. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom, don't use those abstractions. Talk to real yeah. people. Yeah, try and figure out, you yeah. know, what's happening on the ground. You heard, you heard it here first, on the ground. On the ground, that's what, that's, yeah, here you go. You're in BC there, you're like, gonna tell me what the reality is you know life is amazing out in bc i hear the weather's incredible probably well i um did i give you the link to be fama homes mm -hmm. i want to i want to share a couple I links and I'll, yeah I'll, I'll share a couple links and then in post-production we'll see the videos come up so mm. what be fama homes is is um uh, a sponsor for the show right okay well they are good then they're good, yeah. yeah, and and they do um, home manufacturers or home they they manufacture homes in a factory, and I've been. Well, I love it. Yeah, anything yeah. made in a factory is good. I'm yeah, I'm all in on Bfama homes. Yes. Yeah, so they they do one they do houses that are more resilient in in forest areas, or they can raise up in a in a, yeah. in a floodplain, yeah. right? As opposed yeah, to manufacturing stuff is way better than construction, right? Because construction the costs don't come down; they always go up. Versus if you do manufacturing, your costs can come down. Stellumar tried this here in, mm. in Ontario. And I think they did an okay job. Like, you know, I don't know if they had the scale to do it. They're making like massive homes and like moving on like rails. I don't know. It was complicated. Um, so probably BFAMA is doing something even more amazing and incredible. Do they make them sort of modular and put them together? Oh man, I've realized I've, I've got to go. I've got to have some dinner, but okay. We'll talk next week of all about BFAMA. We'll have a whole episode about shilling BFAMA. Be fun. I'll even like learn something about them. And then we can talk sensibly about like, which be fun home would you live in? They have different oh, choices, right? right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's cool. Okay. Well, that's a perfect way to leave it. And Alex, go get your dinner and uh, yes. good to see you awesome. again. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Yeah. Just send me a reminder before the show to learn about the So don't, I'm not even saying the name, right? So that might be the first step. Um, and then we can go all in on their stuff and we'll look at it from all different angles in terms of like, you know, sustainability, which is probably amazing. And then your cost of manufacturing versus construction, which is also going to be incredible. And then we can like say like, well, what else could you use this model for? Yeah. What yeah. if you did education this way? Yeah. Yeah. Now, would you say before you go, the last thing I want to leave the yeah. audience with is that yeah. we wouldn't talk like this to another academic. What you, how oh, I wouldn't would... talk to an academic to begin with. No, no. <laughs> more like they wouldn't talk to me, basically. No, but, but, but the language we were just speaking there, right, yeah. was, was um, you know, very high level, how are we going to get something done sort of uh, language, right? I really, I do believe that because oh, that's the language that, you know, business think is, I think, you know, it's like, okay, how am I, you know, we have, we have to think, how are we going to arrange, you know, the chess pieces and win the game always. Right. That's so. That's, so how would an academic? Oh, I'm so curious now. I gotta. I gotta eat, but I also want to know how an academic approaches this sort of. Well, thing. they just they wouldn't they wouldn't see they wouldn't um, arrange things so so much immediately. Well, it's funny because they think was, too big picture, right? They would think well, objective well, and yeah, they don't see how things connect together necessarily in some ways. Because I was watching, I was rewatching the thing from last week, and I talked about Facebook and then going to this event when they're talking about. And it was on Facebook. It was on. It's the only place you can watch it. And they're talking about social media and why we shouldn't use Facebook. And I was like, oh, there's a bit of a disconnect between you, academic, high level thinker, in terms of like, oh, social media is bad, but not anything specific in terms of like, wait, what is this actual thing we're doing right now? Like we're doing we're this, it, yeah. yeah, and we're we're using well, not 
us, but they were using Facebook, but it's the platform they're using to broadcast the anti-Facebook thing, which like, I guess maybe academics like throwing biting hands that feed them or something or other, but like a smart person um, yeah. would be like, well, wait a well, second, we, yeah. maybe I should like say my anti-Facebook thing off of Facebook, not because like Facebook's going to censor me, though they might, but like it would have more credibility to be like, or think that there's maybe some good to the system as you know what I mean. And that, that's good what to I Facebook? Well, there's what I, what I think is that we have this incredible ability to communicate through various different, you know, market orientated, you know, entities like Facebook and, you know, Twitter and, you know, all of these different sure, things. Sure. I mean, even Reddit and all the, all the things that come up into the market, who's the one that decides it's the group. It's that's the one that decides. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, certainly so, if you are putting on an event, you choose yeah. where you're going to have that event in physical space. You yeah. also choose where you're going to have it in digital space. And the great thing about digital space is you can be in multiple digits of the spaces at the same time, right? Like mm -hmm. we're recording this on Zoom. Yeah. Um, they're not paying us for this yet, but maybe we'll figure out an angle to that. And then we're going to post it where? Like YouTube or you can post it everywhere. You could do it anywhere that makes sense to do it. I think you said the F word though. So there's probably a bunch of places you can't do it without bleeping it, but whatever. I leave that in your capable hands to figure out how to do post production. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I no, mean, it's we great. know it's we know awesome. we know we can put it on an engineering platform now because you've given sufficient disclaimers and. <laughs> I don't even know if there an is engineer. an engineer. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know if there is an engineering platform well, that exists. <laughs> there might not even be such a thing. Well, uh, you know, Professor Keen, we had a we had him on last night, and. Yeah. Um, you know, he's worth checking out is he's actually running for the new liberal party. And so I think if you want to investigate Whoa, maybe some of the, gosh. the, um, I feel like you're going to have to give me homework. This is what's uh, going to happen. Really? You have to send me another email that says homework, like you did today. And then I rewatched our video. <laughs> but it was just thought, a video. Like, I, I think yeah, no, that was fine. I did my home. I did most of the homework. <laughs> so just send me homework and I'll do it. I'm a good student, you know, and then I'll read. Yeah. About Fama Holmes and about Stephen Keen. And then I'll combine the two together in some way that like, you know, I don't know. Is well, yeah, we will keep talking about it up until I think January. And then we have some of our, our guests scheduled or not. Yeah, I guests, should probably do our... something with that. Like I have talked to some people and they're interested. I should probably actually ask them for to commit to specific dates. That's probably how this works, right? Is you're like, hey. Well, we have Michael, a pilot. So the thing yeah. is, is that use that how you want. You know the content in there. And okay. you could say, you know, I would say something like um it's just an easy breezy conversation it's not it's that's oh yeah no it that's really... that's fine i'm not worried about and then they can it. see about how scheduling it right yeah like, i actually need to say to somebody like this is the day we're going to do this thing and then they need to actually agree that that works for them yeah yeah yeah, yeah i don't think you're quite you're neur neurotic enough to like understand how, how how stressful it is to actually have to pick a date to, to do a thing it's good that you said this is like five to six but the problem is now it's past six and i do definitely do need to eat so anyway we'll talk more next week we'll figure out all these things the fama homes the stephen keenan ivory waynes whatever it was <laughs> yeah. and then the uh I'm, I'm, that was an insult to anybody there that was a compliment no, no. huge compliment yeah. big fan of all those yeah. people and then the like you know alex's neurotic <laughs> scheduling problems we'll figure yeah. all of those out right on okay awesome all right. see you next week see ya